Hello. <laughs> hey guys. So um, thanks so much if you guys are returning visitors. Um, I'm Denise. I'm one of the educators here. And welcome to all the ones that are new and are just joining us for the first time. Um, so today's program is all on going on a river adventure, learning about water and some of the animals we may encounter in our adventures. Um, but before we get started, there are a couple of things to kind of go through. First and foremost, you probably noticed by now that all of you are muted, um, and that's to help us help you so we can be able to hear or be able to see your questions if you have any and see your responses as well. Because if all of you start talking, I don't know about you, but I struggle to keep up with everybody if there's so many people talking at once. It's a little confusing. Um, but if you have a question for us, there is a Q&A box that you can type your response in and one of our lovely and wonderful panelists, along with the two that are here with me today, um, will either help answer the question and will help support me if I need to answer the question for you. And I don't know what it is because I'm getting older every day. Um, and if I have a question for you all, you'll just need to put it in the chat box. Um, so let's go on an adventure. So before we start on our adventure though, my friend over here, um, one of the really cool things about North Carolina is that we have a lot of river basins. Does anyone know what a river basin is? Type your response in the chat box. Anyone heard of a river basin before? Probably not. <laughs> um, it has a lot of different names. Uh, it's also known as a watershed in some cases. Um, so Beth, if you could put up the picture of um, North Carolina and its water basins. Wait, that awkward moment. Yeah, the awkward moments. I'm just going to dance. Yep. Awkward way. Dance. <laughs> there, there we go. Um, so this is North Carolina. Um, and North Carolina is actually home to 17 different water basins. Um, and so all of those different colors kind of show where um, rivers kind of flow through and the basins kind of go there. So a basin is basically wherever any land um, is around a river and all the water kind of flows above it or below it into the river, uh, which is kind of cool. So pretty much all of North Carolina is a river basin. Um, so if you can kind of come back to me, I want to show you a really cool example of a water basin. So Nikki, you're going to be able right. to work. Uh-oh. Can you make me get up? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make you get up. Oh, man. Because we have this I thought I was getting a break today. <laughs> nah. Okay. All right. So All right. Ready? We have, yes, there I we am go. Ready. We're zooming in, guys. Zooming Sorry in. Sorry if I make a few seconds. There we go. Woo. All right. That's appropriate. It is appropriate. Working on water. Working on water. Um, so this is kind of our little model of some land nearby a river. A little tiny streams kind of going down into it. Um, a river basin pretty much draws all that water down to here. So I kind of started on it so you can kind of see a little bit of water going on. But as it rains and rains some more, the water starts kind of flowing down into the local River. Kind of cool, isn't it? Um, but what is, mm. as it's zooming in some more, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's all good. Um, so, one of the really cool things about river basins is a lot of our animal neighbors enjoy these because what is one thing, and if you can zoom back down, right. but what is one of the most important things that animals and us people need? To live. Water. Yep, water. <laughs> so we need water. And so water is so important to not just us people, but to our animal neighbors as well. And North Carolina is so special. It's home to over a thousand different species of animal friends. Now, of course, we can't go through all of them today because then we'd be here for hours and hours, and it'd probably be like three o'clock in the morning when we're just um, so let's kind of talk about a few of them. So if we're going on our adventure down the river, we kind of have to start all the way up in the mountains. So 
So one of the coolest things you might encounter in the mountains has this on their head. Anyone know what it is? Um, extra fiber. Maybe we go. It is. A moose, you're kind of on the right track. They're kind of in the same family. Elk. Elk, yes. Um, elk actually used to live here all the time, but they kind of disappeared for a while. But the Great Smoky Mountains National Park brought them back and they've been here ever since. Um, and they're really amazing um, animals because not only are they, what kind of animal? What kind of food do they eat? Let me say with potty. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry. What was it? Is that the, um, uh, the Native American word for? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. I'm glad somebody remembered that one because that's totally herbal. herbal. They are herbivores, so they kind of help spread a lot of the seeds that they, um, the plants give when they eat it, which is really cool. Um, but they are also a prey animal. Any guesses on what kind of animals eat them? Wolves. Um, in the past, here in North Carolina, a lot of wolves would eat them out west. They, the wolves eat them there. But can you think of any animals found around here? Pumas. Used to. I really wish our pumas were still around. Our eastern cougars. But bears. Bears. Yeah, black bears will eat the smaller ones, um, as will bobcats. Coyotes. Coyotes. Yeah. So they kind of help around. Mountain lions. Mountain lions, yep, they're also known as cougars, catamount, pumas. <laughs> List can go on and on and on and on. So, um, oh my gosh, my brain's pardon. Um, Beth, if you can show the picture of the elk for those maybe who are not familiar with what they look like. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the one on the left is actually Tommy, the one we saw our male here. Um, at the zoo. That's why he kind of has a little tag on him. Um, help the keepers there kind of determine who's who because they all kind of look the same from a distance. Um, and then the other one, I believe it was actually from the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. They kind of wander around a bit. Um, but what do you think could happen if the water is a little dirty and these guys are plant eaters, so plants like water? What do you think could happen to these four guys if the water's dirty? And yes, I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, they could get sick, really sick, and they could die. And then what would happen to our poor coyotes and bears that like to eat them? They would get sick and die too. So that's why it's really important with water to make sure they it stays clean too. We have a, a question, quick, quick question. Okay. So uh, they want to know how does the river flow? They said I thought the that is kind of true. Water um, does get absorbed by soil, but it can only hold up so much water. It's kind of like a sponge. You know, after a certain point in time when the water just kind of is so much, it can't absorb anymore. Um, you know, and sometimes the dirt actually gets in the water too. And we'll kind of talk about that in a moment because I'm sure you want to hear about another animal. Our little friend here. Actually, looks like this. Zoom in. Any guesses on what this animal friend is? Yeah, he is a salamander. So you guys are right. This one is actually called the hellbender. They're also known as the water dog. Um, what are some of the other ones I just brain farted on them? Oh, snot otter. Snot otter, all sorts of really cool guys. Now, salamanders, this fellow right here is actually the largest in North Carolina, and you can find them in our mountain streams, which I think is really cool because they're kind of awesome. Uh, but salamanders also have another job, and if some of you who were here talking when we were talking about amphibians, anyone remember the cool science name for amphibians? What kind of job they have?
And while you guys are thinking about that, I'm going to bring out our first friend. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, might have it begins with a B, guys. Yeah. And a big fancy science word for when they let you know What's how it? healthy an environment is. Well, that's a like big it. word. I know, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Any thoughts yet? Or is oh, yeah. I think you might have to explain it. Okay. It's a, it's a tough one. Wrong one. Very good. Wrong water. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so salamanders, a lot like their cousins, all the amphibians. They actually have a special job because you mostly find them in or near water. They like to stay moist in water. And that's why we got some RO water, which is kind of really clean water. So I can pick up our friend. Water. And so because they're so in tune with the water. They are actually called a bioindicator, which is a really cool fancy name to mean that they kind of tell us what's going on with the water. Oh, there, oh, there he is. There's the rim. So say hello to Forrest. Forrest Stump. Adults will probably get the joke. There are some really good educated kids on movies. Somebody knows what kind it is. Who? What kind is he? He is a spotted salamander, yeah. so I really wish I could. We could have the help bender education animal. <laughs> um, could we have one, please? <laughs> um, yes, Beth and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, we got this little smaller cousin of them, and they are bioindicator because if something's wrong with the water, they're one of the first to get affected. So they're kind of our warning systems for when the water is not really clean. And so you guys are right that forest is a spotted salamander. They're one of the common ones you find here in North Carolina. Um, and so he can even be found here. Sorry, keep on lowering <laughs> him a little bit. Um, he can even be found, you know, in the Piedmont, near the coast, up in the mountains. He's kind of everywhere, um, which makes him even cooler. Because as you go on an adventure, you might be able to find him, especially when it's time. Oh, are you a little camera shy? Mm -hmm. Kind of going away. He's new. He's yeah, he's kind of new. He's still learning. Whoop. Got him. <laughs> kind of slid off a little bit. There we go. Hey, buddy. Um, another really cool thing about these guys. <laughs> what about Steve? No help vendors for education. Bam! Too many specific requirements. <laughs> but but we have all the sort all the cool people that do mm -hmm. um, the really cool projects for hellbenders here mm -hmm. at the zoo. So their larger cousins, the hellbenders, are struggling a little bit up in the mountains um, because um, they're building a lot of things up there, and so when they do that, a lot of trees get pulled torn down so that they can make room for buildings, which isn't necessarily a bad thing brings more people out there, some more economy, but it makes the water dirty. That makes it really hard to see. And so the hellbenders rely on their site so they can see where their home is in the water because that's where they lay their eggs. Um, and so the North Carolina Zoo is actually helping these guys um, by providing some more stable homes that are a little bit easier to spot in the water. So that they're able to. Very active. He is very <laughs> active today. Um, so that they're able to have their eggs, let nest them, and be able to have more babies. Well, Angela wants to know is he poisonous? Um, I can see where you think he's kind of poisonous because of all the colors. Mm -hmm. A lot of amphibians use those really bright colors to make them seem like they're poisonous or venomous, so that they won't get eaten. Um, but this fellow, not so much. He is a very active fella, so I think I might want to put him back because <laughs> he's going to start exploring far too much and don't want him to get hurt. 
Do you guys have any questions about our yeah. salamander friend? Because he's kind of amazing. If you have questions for us, don't forget to put those in the yeah. Q&A box. My favorite thing about salamanders in North Carolina is we have the most diverse group of, of salamanders in the world. We do. We have over 60 species of salamanders just in North Carolina, which is pretty awesome. So um, if you could bring... Oh, we got some questions about oh, the salamander. Okay. okay. Yep. Before we continue <laughs> with the... Come back again. Yeah. How old was the salamander? Uh, he's new. Yeah, so we're not quite sure how old he is. I'm let's see if Beth and Steve might Beth be able to answer that now. one. Because I'm not hundred percent sure. Or Linda, or Wendy, or Kathy. <laughs> one of them. He knew us. Um, oh, can spotted salamanders run fast? Um, I mean, he was pretty quick on my hands, so <laughs> he's a pretty quick fellow. Whether he can run super fast like a cheetah or something like that, maybe not. <laughs> and will they die if something is wrong with the water? They can, unfortunately because there's so much stuff that, um, and if and some of you may remember when Nikki talked about it, but salamanders breathe through their skin. So because of that, any chemicals and particles and stuff that make that are in the water that's not supposed to be there could clog them up and then they won't be able to breathe, which is not really fun at all. Oh, breathing is good. Um, yeah. What do they eat? Um, so, Spotted salamanders are. They can eat the insects. They do. They are insectivores, which is that fancy name. They like insects and bugs. Huh? Well, we don't have an age on them. No. <laughs> so he is ageless. Yep. <laughs> you can live forever, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's what happens when you listen to too many songs <laughs> over the ages. Um. But kind of going back to the hellbender real quick before we kind of show another example. Um, this is partly why when it gets really dirty, it's hard to see. Come on, turn it around real quick. Yeah. Can you see me? Can you see me now? No. So do you think a salamander, like our hellbender, can see if the water's like that? Probably not. Um, so that's part of the reason why it's kind of important to make sure our water stay clean. So another kind of reasoning behind that, if you can bring the camera closer. Yeah, there again. You go. Another adventure. Another adventure because it's fun and I want to keep on using this. <laughs> um, so sometimes when it rains really hard and there's not enough trees, you get a lot of soil kind of spreads out and when it rains, where do you think all that goes? Into the local stream and you I know, it's kind of gross, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are using um, gel for <laughs> example. Um, but it gets into the water and that's part of why... Um, I remember that was blue at one point. That was blue and I used blue so you could see it. Um, One more friend you might find in the mountains, but this fellow right here can actually be found all over North Carolina, um, but was reintroduced in the mountains. Um, and looks like Leas. And if Beth could show the picture of our next friend, she'd be the one right after. There we go. Aww. And I gave you a cheat because I wrote it out. <laughs> yeah, the river otters. Um, did you know that? I know they're really adorable and cute. Um, it's so cute, yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> so river otters um, are found all over North Carolina and like their name, they live in rivers and streams and they prefer to be in the water a lot of the time. Um, now, do you know what these guys eat? Yeah, he is so cute. It's so cute, yeah. Fish, yep, they like fish. Yep, fish. Fish is part of mainly on their diet, but they also will eat salamanders and other amphibians if they need to. They kind of will eat a lot of different things, to be honest. Um, but these guys, like amphibians, are actually very susceptible or very um, 
kind of vulnerable to water change too. So if something changes in the water, they get sick as well. We don't want to miss on these cute guys, right? No. Guys and gals, because they're adorable. Um, well, so is the salamander. Yeah, so are salamanders. They're all cute and adorable and neat. All right, so um, you can come back to being it. So of course, there's tons of other animals up in the mountains that you can see and encounter, but we've kind of already gone downstream a bit. So let's kind of go into the Pima or the middle of the state. You think they're ready for our next round? Oh, I bet you they are. All right, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you a hint on who our next friend is. <laughs> and yes, I do add sound effects sometimes because it's fun. All right, so our next friend, any questions as I'm kind of getting stuff ready? So I think some of these were about the salamander that I missed. They got asked them after we put them Oh, no. Well, oh, so you are, well, I'm getting our friend out. I can still answer questions. So why, are, why are salamanders so slimy? Um, because they like to stay moist um, is the best way to describe mm -hmm. it. Um, they kind of spend a lot of their time either in water or near water, um, and it keeps their skin from drying out. Any other questions? Oh, I think we go. Oh, okay. All right. I want to shout out to Nicole Ivory and her um, young scholars group. They're going to be doing, we'll be doing a program, a couple programs for them in the next couple weeks. Ooh, awesome. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah. Are you ready for your camera? Oh, he's always ready. He Thank is goodness. always ready. So this is Vanderbilt. He's our grumpy <laughs> friend here. Does anyone know what he is? Box yep, he is a box turtle and he's always loves the camera. Look at, he's like, this is my best side. Yep, yep, this is my best side. Mm -hmm. um, and so like kind of the river otter, these guys are found all over North Carolina too. Um, but we do see kind of a lot of them in the central part of North Carolina as well. <laughs> That's so close and personal, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, these guys, box turtles, as you guys are right, it is a box turtle. Um, these guys don't necessarily live in water, but they do have cousins that do, right? But do these guys need to drink water too? <laughs> yep, yep, you guys are right, yeah. So they need water too. And what do you think these guys eat? Just, you just love cameras, don't you? It's like, of course I do. Yeah, they do. They are. Um, they are. Huh? Plants and small worms. Plants and small worms, yeah. So plants rely on water, just like these guys need water to drink to be able to stay hydrated. <laughs> he does look grumpy. He is kind of grumpy. But unfortunately, it's not his fault that he's grumpy. He's a pretty, he's kind of like grumpy cat in a way. He looks grumpy, but he's really happy on the inside. Um, but unfortunately, this fellow, we think what had happened was he kind of got attacked in the top part of his beak, which is the name for their mouse. Um, kind of got a little bitten off. And so that's why it kind of looks like it just has a bottom. He's like, that doesn't change me from being who I am, no. Do we know how old he is? So I want to say he's in his 20s, is he, he is. not? Yeah, he's in his 20s. But he, um, kind of like our other friend, um, he did come from the wild. Um, so he was injured and brought to, I want to say our wildlife rehab center. Mm -hmm. yep. And they realized, you know, he couldn't eat quite like the way regular box turtles eat because of his poor beak being um, cut off that way. So he does kind of eat the same stuff but just a little differently. He kind of has to get smaller sizes so he can eat and swallow, but he still kind of eats the same stuff. Now, why is he called a box turtle? He doesn't, it's not wearing a box, right? You are just a ham, aren't you? It's like, of course I am. He has this, he has the selfie turtle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does close up like a box, so kind of to show off his belly a little bit. 
um, this part right here is what can be closed. So he has a little slight hinge right here. So when he's scared, he'll close himself up in the box, close it up, and he'll be as safe as can be. Now, here's the question a lot of people think. Can this fellow get a new shell? Can he leave his shell and get a new one? No. No, man, you guys are just so smart. Maybe you should be doing it. <laughs> but no, he can't because, kind of like us, his backbone's attached because we can't turn around and get our backbone out and show it to everybody, right? Well, he can't either. Like, I don't want to either. Does anyone have any questions about Vanderbilt or Sox Turtles in general? I think we answered this, but I can't hurt to hear it again. What do they eat? So they are herbivores, but they do like their occasional worm. I like the fact that when they're young, they're mostly meat eaters. And then mm -hmm. as they get older, they start eating more salad. He's like, I'm so. just, as I'm getting older, I need to start losing the weight. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, certainly. That's the case for me, too. And how long do they live? Can um, they live? How long, how long can, can they live? live? Yeah. Oh, man, they can live a long time. Mm -hmm. Some species of turtle can live over 200 years. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of, if you ever, which hopefully you won't decide to get a pet turtle, mm -hmm. you kind of have to put them in their will um, because they'll probably outlive you. <laughs> they live a pretty long life. But these guys, I want to say they live about 60, 70 years. 70, but yeah. Yeah, but in great condition, mm -hmm. they can live up to 100 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Any other questions about Mr. Vanderbilt or not camera shy <laughs> turtle? I think we got most of them. You can come back and answer while you find oh, yeah. a way. If they come up, we'll, we'll All right. Them. Okay. <laughs> He's and cute. He is adorable. And I'm wearing gloves. Um, because just to try to keep everything clean. Um, not necessarily because he's dirty. Oh, Angela wants to know what do we feed him? Um, I want to say they love their carrots and their lettuce mm -hmm. and they get some worms too. Yeah, they eat worms and crickets. crickets. Yeah. A little variety of food. They get salad mm -hmm. some days and then they get their, their meat other days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what are his predators? Um, well, if we think about it, let me show this these shells off real quick. Um, his shell, while well, it kind of looks really cool, this one shows you the best. What do you think this is made of? Um, yeah, but it is made of bone. So um, they do have scales. They are reptiles, so they have scales on top, but there's bone underneath which those scales are called scoops, which are amazing. Really cool word, very cool scientific word. Um, so, you know, it does make it a bit harder for any predator to want to eat them. Um, but um, most of the time cars are the main things that will um, harm the turtle, um, especially box turtles, because they like to, um, they'll end up crossing the streets to get from one place to another. Um, so if you ever encounter one in the road and he's going this way, you might want to keep him going this way because there's a water source nearby because they always like to hang out there. Any other questions about our turtle friend before I have you come back in? Only one solid award today. Can you decorate the shell? Um, I have seen him decorated. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to say I've seen a lot of them, like especially if it's one that someone that's already passed away, I'll see them get painted to make it very pretty and decorative. Um, I know what we've done. So we uh, rec we uh, did a study on box turtles and we kind of decorated, <laughs> but not really. Yeah, put we little put little notches actually. Mm -hmm. So right there, here we make little notches. I think this guy actually has one. See it right there? And that lets us know a specific number, depending on where we put the knot. You can put another one right there. So that tells us the number, and that's how a lot of scientists can study box mm -hmm. Kind of a decoration generator. Right. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Don't like, 
like just go in the middle of the woods and find a turtle and be like, oh, I want to see it. Yeah. Don't do you find a shell like that? Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> okay. All right, we're coming right back in. Right. Yeah. Here we go. Because back before, we, before we go to the coast, Carolina, we got a lot of farms. Um, same with the coast as well. Um, but we also have a lot of development as well. So there's even more soil. <laughs> but there's also fertilizer from farms. They kind of go in there too. What color is my fertilizer? I think it's supposed to be green. No. <laughs> like a very light green. Yeah. But because there's so many people in our huge cities like Raleigh and Greensboro and Charlotte, there's also trash. Oh. Wendy wishes all trash was glitter. <laughs> That'd be real Sorry. nice. <laughs> All right, so as it rains again. Oh, we're going to get pretty, pretty water this time. It is. It's going to be glittery. <laughs> Getting there. Sometimes it takes a little bit because as um, someone said earlier about soil, soil does absorb a lot of water. So it takes a little bit, but runoff um, when um, it rains and it goes into the roads and everything. Oh, it's a glittery yellow. Look at that. I bet you uh, <laughs> should have done really, instead of the silver, I should have done another color. What color should I have done with it? Uh, <laughs> All right, so we've traveled from the mountains into the town, and now we're at. The coast, the beach. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. Right. Well, hopefully, you don't get burned. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Um, I think I'll have to tan in somebody's face. Right. <laughs> um, so the world, we got a couple more friends we want to talk about. Um, and if Beth can show the one picture. Maybe. It's always the awkward way. Um, <laughs> so while that's going, yeah. Um, what picture did you need? Maybe she wasn't sure which one to grab. Oh, um, the one with our friends from Alligator River. Uh oh, the mic. So can okay. you guys hear us? Uh -oh. Everything plugged in. Hopefully, our little truck didn't knock things out. Oh, okay. Now we can hear? Let yeah. us know if you can hear us. Okay. Say yes, you can hear us in the chat or if you can hear us. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Good. Yeah, and someone kind of already said it. It is a red wool. Um, but if Beth can show the picture of the red wool while I start talking about it, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> while we're waiting for that picture to come up. Um, does anyone know how many red wolves are in the wild? Oh, Beth's internet is down. Oh, oh no. no. We lost Beth. We lost Beth. Okay. So right. never mind on the pictures. Next day on the pictures. Um, but red wolves. Oh, hey, grab that. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it has there the cutest go. picture ever. Here we go. Red wolf babies. Red wolves. Here we go. Woohoo! Red wolf babies. Cute little adorable red wolf babies. Um, now, red wolves are actually one of the most endangered wolves in the world, canids in general as well. Um, and North Carolina is its only home in the wild that we know of, um, which makes North Carolina really cool. And they're found at Alligator River Preserve down at the coast. Um, if you've ever driven to the Outer Banks and have gone past Raleigh down 85 and everything like that, you actually pass through it, which is kind of cool. Um, but unfortunately, there's less than 30 in the wild right now. Lower. It's even lower. 20 to 25. Now. 20 to 25. Um, but the North Carolina Zoo is actually doing a lot to help these guys out. So we're one of the largest um, associations that has a breeding program. We have, I want to say there's like 
How many now? Oh, goodness. Because we, we just had some five, babies. Seven, four, six, 20, 26. 26. So that's probably even more than what's in the wild right now. <laughs> um, and that's in, is that including the two that we have up front? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Including cool. our two ambassadors mm -hmm. that um, you see when you come to the zoo. Um, 26. So that's one of the largest in the world. Um, okay. um, huh? in, in human care. That's yep. In human care. Facility. Yep. Yep, and human care. And so these guys, what do you think these guys eat? Let me know, is that real fur? Um, unfortunately, it is real fur. Um, I want to say, is this one from Fish and Wildlife? Yeah. yeah. Um, Fish and Wildlife um, does give us to use for programming so we can teach more about the animal. Um, they will provide us with some skins from whether an animal that had passed away um, in, the, in the wild um, or was seized. Mm -hmm. In this case, I want to say this one passed away from old age. Yeah, I'm not sure how. But um, it is real fur, so it's to kind of show and teach more about this animal um, so that we can learn more about them and kind of help them out more. Um, well, somebody wants to know how can they help predators? Oh, I love that yeah, question. Really so nice. um, one of the best things you can do is visit the North Carolina Zoo mm -hmm. um, so that you can continue to support our um, breeding program. Um, you know, by just coming to the zoo, you contribute a portion of your ticket sales goes into our conservation program, um, which is really cool and amazing because we have a lot of not just world ones like in Africa, for example, we have some just around here too, like the Red Wolf, for example, Red Wolf Recovery Program. Um, we also have with our next guest, our next friend, mm -hmm. we'll talk about a little bit, um, our zoo also provides support for those guys as well. So is it soft? It is very soft. <laughs> Now, of course, in the summertime, they won't have long fur like this. They do shed, they do shed a lot. And I want to say it's Flint, um, Flint, our male ambassador, our male red wolf that's an ambassador. He has a little mohawk that goes down his back. <laughs> Everything else looks like it's been shaved off except for that mohawk. <laughs> oh, is the picture coming up? Yep. That's, that's actually, that's, back, yeah. that's actually, I think that is, no, is that, that pigeon? I think it's pigeon. I think it's pigeon, yeah. Looks like pigeon. Um, that one's Pigeon. Pigeon and Flint were named after rivers, um, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, so our, one of the other things to think about is these guys are carnivores. I think some of you had answered that with kind of things. They eat, they eat small mammals, animals, um, and they also need water just like everyone else. And, mm -hmm. you know, if those smaller animals get sick from bad water, what do you think could happen to these guys? <laughs> Thank you for letting us know that. Well, that's coming up. Somebody wants to know why are they endangered? I thought they were carnivores. That is true. They are carnivores. Um, but unfortunately, in the past, a lot of people were scared of carnivores like wolves. And when they're scared, they end up hunting them. And so they were hunted very heavily, especially because their fur is so pretty and cute. Um, they were hunted for their fur. And unfortunately, the population went down a lot. Um, but we know we can be successful with bringing wolf populations back. Um, Yellowstone Park with the, um, some wolf species there has shown some success. So hopefully by um, continuing here in captivity to help bolster the red wolf population, maybe in the future we'll be able to see that success as well. Um, any other questions about red wolves before we go to our last friend? Yeah, good. Yeah, so you know, kind of shows the cycle there. Water is so important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every sorts of stuff that we have that we've put on that poor mm -hmm. table that I'm going to have to clean up afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, affects them. Um, it also affects our next friend and our final friend. I'm actually not going to take him out of the case because he's a flight risk. Mm -hmm. um, but this fellow right here. Let's see if we can get as close as we can. He's not cooperating very much. <laughs> he's hiding in the back corner. Yeah, he's hiding in the back corner. Maybe yeah, you can kind of see him a little bit. Can you guys see him? Kind of hard to look through shiny glass. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and the yeah. camera's focusing on the dirt right in the front. Yeah, <laughs> all the moss is right in the front. So. He is. He's in the back corner. Yep, he is a frog. I think we saw a frog, right? Yeah. Yep, so this is um, a gopher frog. Um, they're found here in North Carolina, and they mm -hmm. are amphibian like their cousins, the salamanders, so they are bioindicators as well. Maybe you can mm -hmm. hold them. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Um, so the North Carolina Zoo is actually helping these guys out because um, of water changes and everything. They struggle to kind of have enough eggs to hatch. And so um, the zoo is actually doing what's called a head starting where they will collect some eggs from big, huge piles of eggs that um, frogs will lay. Oh, you can see it too. Yep. There we go. And um, they will kind of catch them to tadpoles and then release them. Okay. <laughs> a little awkward. Yeah, it is very awkward, but at least you got a chance to see him a little bit. He was hopping earlier, but I guess he's like, no, nope, I'm too camera shy. Um, so we're kind of helping out with them too. And like a lot of the other animals we talked today, you know, they're very affected by water. Without clean water, they can get sick. We don't want these cute guys to be sick either. Something can frogs give you warts? Um, frogs cannot. Um, I know there's <laughs> myths around turd, yeah. around toads. It's a myth. That's it is a myth. So. <laughs> so no. Yeah, no, not quite. It'd be really interesting if that, could, if that was real, but not quite. Um, but these guys do serve as kind of the warning system, so we know what's wrong with the water, which is really helpful. He is not poisonous. Um, in this case, right? That's what I thought. I wanted to double check on that one. <laughs> but he is not poisonous or venomous. He's just a regular old frog, um, you know, who just kind of hangs out. A lot of your more, I guess, poison like frogs are found more towards the little forest areas. Um, they're poisonous. I mean, like our toads we have around here, American toads, they can secrete poison. Um, it's not enough to kill you, but it can just don't lick a toad and <laughs> you'll be okay. <laughs> I know you guys are smart enough not to do that. Yeah. All right. So to so we kind of gone down to the coast. <laughs> it's still dripping. I'm still dripping a little bit. Um, you know they have even more farms and more things going on there. Coming back in? Coming back in. All right, here we go. Because there's even more. Oh my goodness. All right, so as you go from the mountains down to the sea, and you collect more and more stuff. Is mm -hmm. that what's going on? It is. It collects more and more stuff so that by the time we get to the coast, it's, it's glitter. It's glitter, <laughs> yes, it's glitter. It's, it's just gonna look like glitter. Um, <laughs> it actually is going to look. <laughs> Get it out. Not make it a big mess. Here we go. What do you think about that? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Mm. Anybody want to drink that? <laughs> That's gross. That is very gross. Even the glitter's not pretty. <laughs> no, it's not pretty anymore. It kind of looks like this murky green. Ugh. We don't want that. And so that goes out into our oceans, along with any other plastics and everything else that kind of gets pulled along as it goes too. But now that we went on that journey and we saw how dirty the water gets, what can we do about it? Is there any ideas you guys have? what we can do to keep our waters clean? Because you guys are super amazing. I mean, you're all on it today. No pollution. No pollution. That's true. But what is pollution? Don't later. Yep, that's definitely a good one. Don't 
litter, don't dump anything into our waterways, recycle. Mm -hmm. Um, have more trees near the water. Yeah, trying to maintain and keep those um, natural trees that grow up around um, go around the rivers, keep them up and going, mm -hmm. keep them from being torn down. That definitely would help decrease the amount of soil that goes in. Yeah. Yep, recycle. Yeah, definitely there's a whole lot of things we can do. Um, just thinking about that. You know, there's a lot of opportunity to be able to help with all of that kind of stopping all the pollution, everything like that. You can participate in a local cleanup. Um, you can even learn more about your river basin. Um, if you Google North Carolina River Basins, the Department of Natural and Environmental Services actually has a really cool website where you can put in your area code and we'll tell you which one you're in, which is kind of amazing and helps you learn more about what kinds of animals you see around there. Um, and, you know, they can also kind of give you a heads up of, um, you know, all sorts of things you might encounter, which is really cool. Um, a lot of local, I guess, towns and cities that live near, that are near rivers also have local cleanup efforts. Um, so, we all need water to live. Not just our animal neighbors, we do too. So we need to do whatever we can to help keep our water clean. So one last question, two last questions for you actually. So on a scale of one being to five being yes, how many of you would be more likely to visit your local river, river basins and whatever other parks and preserves that are nearby. 500. 500, oh, I love you. <laughs> nice. A thousand, <laughs> now they're trying to help each other. Nice. A four, I can go with that. Me, yeah. <laughs> okay, so on that same scale, one being meh, to five being how many of you would be more likely to participate in a local cleanup? Like going out there and helping to pick up trash and all sorts of stuff nearby a river, um, or just in general, local cleanup? Nice. Uh, is, oh, that, is that 10,000? <laughs> Five to the 49,000 power, is that what it is? <laughs> Five if I had the time. Yeah, and I mean, and I definitely agree with you on that. We certainly, um, time is definitely a big thing with that. Um, but if you can just do little things, you don't have to go out to a clean out. You can, you know, make sure you try not to leave trash on the ground. You can clean up after yourself. If you go somewhere, don't leave stuff behind. Um, that definitely would help out a lot, you're especially. Walking around, you're walking out, just see some mm -hmm. trash, pick it up. Mm -hmm. But it's in the local in the nearby trash can if there's one available. If not, you know, if you have a little bag with you, you can stick it in there until you can get to a trash can. All right. Um, you guys are amazing and super smart. And thank you so much for joining us today on our river adventure. And hopefully you'll be able to have one of your own soon. Say bye.